Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are all welcome back to Black Rose TV and yay guys, I am back. Okay, I don't want to go into giving uh, excuses why I was out for long and all. Well, we were all busy with school, with work and with many other things in our lives. So, the, thing, the best part of it is, inshallah, I am back for good. And so, oh my god, I've not introduced myself. I'm Rukai Muhammad Salisu and you're welcome back to Black Rose TV NG. If this is your first, if you're a returning subscriber, why do I even keep mixing these things? If you're a returning subscriber, <laughs> if you're a returning subscriber, you're welcome. I really appreciate the love and support, you guys. And then, if this is your first time on this channel, you're welcome. I am glad to have you. Like, yes, I'm glad to have you. Just do one thing before you leave. Please subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell beside it to get notified when a new video is being uploaded. Misophonia literally translates to hatred of sound. I can see sadness caressing their faces dull as it envelops them into a bone crushing hug. Your scars are your medal, wear them with pride. I don't know, love is life. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, each soho, for there is a blessing in the soho. Yes, today I am going to be talking about a topic that I believe we do not talk about it mostly in our household. We tend to neglect this. It's not just our households, it's just the society as a whole and how we find ourselves and the situation we find ourselves in. Okay, I'm going to be talking about emotional negligence. And this emotional negligence, I'm going to take it, I will do my best to take it through from the early stage of life to adulthood. So uh, this uh, emotional negligence, if we are looking at it from an early stage of life that is in childhood, tends to be childhood emotional negligence. When a person or caregiver or, any person or anybody responsible for a child's upbringing fails to cater for their kids' emotional needs, fails to tend to lack that, tends to give, not give atten attention to a child's emotional needs. Why do I keep stressing based, uh, based on it? Why do I keep talking about child? Because childhood is our early and the, is the first and early stage of life. And during childhood, whatever you've learned during childhood, it's very hard for one to forget. You always keep remembering it. You will carry that with you for the rest of your life. It has been installed in you. You're, you've seen it nurtured, you've grown with it. So it's very hard for one to just keep those aside and just take something else and put. It's not like you're a computer where you can insert this memory card, remove it, and then it's, no, it doesn't work like that. We all know how it works, right? So emotional negligence from the definition is when a person fails to have, is when a person fails to get those emotional comfort i would say emotion when they are, when a person's emotions are being neglected by the person you're, if you're an adult maybe your spouse your parents your children anything like the people you're with they do not give value or give meaning to your emotional needs they do not catch up for that and we all need to do that because well from where i am from northern part of nigeria i keep saying this and from nigeria I cannot be precise so it's a, like it's a society whereby our emotions, our feelings, our mental health, and these emotions and feelings leads to the bigger thing, which is the mental health. Our feelings are mental, like we overlook those. We do not talk about it. It's like sometimes it's even a taboo for one to say, okay, I have depression. Okay, I have anxiety. Okay, I have this, I have that. I have PTSD. I have this. Like things like this in our society, we do not talk about it. And I want to break that. Like, I want to break those barriers, you understand? Like, if we don't break those barriers ourselves, I do not see how we're going to talk about it. And the more we talk about it, the more we get enlightened about it, the more we can find solutions to our own problems. Okay, for example, emotional negligence in childhood. When a child is sad or is unhappy, and then the parent notices that the child is sad, what they do automatically is give them toys. Give them a toy to play with. Go out, play with your friends. In this case, what you're indirectly telling the, to the child is your emotions. I am going to objectify those emotions. Um, your emotions depend on materialistic 
things. When a child is unhappy, is sad, and all the child needs is someone to care for them, someone to listen to them. Why are they sad? Can I help you with that? The parent, okay, why are you sad? I'm just sad. The first thing they give you is a toy to play with. What you're indirectly telling that child is, okay, your emotions are dependent on this thing. Like, this is what you need to keep you happy. We can, we, we fail to instill in our children that uh, you can do other things, that happiness comes from within. This is something that we just, I, there are some things that we grew up and learned from motivational speakers. Things like happiness depends on you, it comes from within, like you need to be happy with yourself first before you are happy with other things around you. So there are people that have really gone through a lot, like they landed the hard way before they truly understood, understood that happiness comes from within. To some certain extent, I think I can testify on this. There were some times that I felt that my happiness depended on something else, well, whereas it depended on me, myself. So I kind of, even though I knew it, sometimes you just can't, you can't help it, but just go through that lane. And once you go through it and you see, you experience whatever it is you experience there, you learn from there and you just keep, you come back to the primary goal, it comes from within, you need to make yourself happy. And the energy you put out there is the one that you receive. I believe in that. The kind of energy you put out in the world is the energy that comes back to you. Well, I just a disclaimer it. here. Parents, I am not, uh, do not, please don't come at me. I am not a parent. Most people know that, like some of my viewers know that. I'm not a parent, so please don't come at me for, I'm not trying to teach you how to raise kids. I'm not trying to teach you, okay, this is what you need to do in order to bring up a child. No, I'm just giving you a suggestion and giving you pointers that please do not ignore this. You know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's just like that. So I'm not a parent. And again, I am not a professional on this school. I have said it countless times in my videos. If I'm not a professional in, on a field, I would say I'm not a professional. Please, if you know better than I do, or if you have something you want to share with us that benefits all of us, please feel free to do so in the comment section it's meant for you guys to express yourselves and i i read each and every comment and i reply to every comment so please just drop it down in the comment section and if you have questions drop it also down emotional negligence we've talked about the child who is sad and then you give them a joy but when a child is sad is unhappy and you ask them what's wrong and they tell you okay you let them express themselves children are talkative. Most children, they're active and they're talkative. So you can't deny them that fact. It's something that is with it. It's their nature to be like that. So parents tend to shush their kids when a child talks to them. Please, can you keep that? I just need peace and quiet. Most, like I've heard these phrases from parents. I need peace and quiet. And can I please get peace and quiet? And that peace and quiet that you're looking for sometimes tends to shut down your kids. It tends to take the child farther away from you because the child will be like, okay i'm not needed what you're in directly telling that child is my emotions are not valid they're not valuable and they're not considered they're not up to the level to be considered or i'm not up to that i'm not even worthy to be considered my emotions and feelings are not worthy of consideration that is what you're giving out to the child and they absorb that so the child tends to be farther away from the parent and what this does to a, and what this does to a child, to a person is, you fail to have that emotional bond with your children. Yes, emotional bond with the kids. If you give your children the emotional presence that they need, if you are present for your child emotionally, like you parents who have been present, who are present for their children emotionally, tend to have. A very beautiful bond that like I do admire whenever I see a parent having that kind of a bond with their children I seriously admire that because you're just telling the child that this is a safe territory even though if you do something I will smack you out or do but hey know that it's okay for you to tell me things it helps me in knowing where to work on more and where to tend to be light light at you when I'm training you because like Childhood and parenting, it's a whole 
like it's a whole thing that is a whole new level i've seen my sisters i've seen my mom i have a lot of siblings so i've seen how they i've seen how they train us so when a parent is present emotionally for their children for their child you're just telling the child that i am here and i can be i am not just your parent i can be a sister i can be a brother i can be a friend which is the most important aspect of parenting being your child's best friend even though sometimes no matter how hard you try kids will always be kids they'll always mess up but you do try your best and they will know that you did your best in bringing them up this is all that matters this emotional uh, emotional negligence it occurs it has a long term or short term consequence if it has a long term consequence when the child is being neglected completely the child is like the emotional needs of a child is being neglected completely what are these emotional needs that i'm talking about emotional needs is just when a person is going through something when they are sad you should be able to tell that you should be able to help them in a way to be out of that condition when they are happy you should rejoice with them help them know how to be happy and be happy for others when they are like it's a whole it's a roller coaster of emotions i would say like you would go you'll jump on that roller coaster with your child and no matter through what stage you pass you'll be there with the child that is all it's about it's just for you to be there emotionally for a child for them to be to have okay if i'm sad i know who to call like i always admire those people that whenever they like okay i need to call my mom okay i need to call my dad like this this i have a friend that no matter what she's going through if she has not told if she has not let her dad know she won't be at peace and i admire so much of that relationship that she has with her dad because and when she's when she's telling you about her dad you will think she's talking to you about her friend or her sister or her brother because of the bond and the close how close they are guess what she's not the only child like they they are she's not the only child she has a lot of siblings but he's not just that with her he's that with every child in the household and i really admire that so that tends to give the child okay i have learned this from my dad i have learned this from my dad nobody else can unlearn that like nothing can make me unlearn that from my head i have my dad has instilled these values in me that my emotions how to control them how to be in control of my emotions when i'm in a certain situation how i can react to this how i should not react to this like they have instilled that in their children to a point that not everything gets to her and i really i, I tell her that like i really admire you that i am a really big fan of this so this is just a shout out for you girl emotional negligence has a long for the long term consequence is when it a person has mental illness that he has not he has not been diagnosed when he was young because the parents have not noticed it it has not been noticed at the early stage unless it has reached like maybe the person is an adult now and he sees that this is not the way he should be reacting to things this is not the way he should be control like he should have control over his emotions that is when a person tends to be aware of their mental health and try to seek help so in this situation this is the kind of long term and the short term and the consequence is very subtle with this emotional negligence especially with children you don't notice it and this emotional negligence it's not intentional it's not abusive because abusive abusing a child or abusing somebody is intentional but neglecting somebody's emotions it's not intentional it's something that occurs indirectly without you knowing and you wouldn't know it does it's occurring because it's very subtle it's very hard for one to notice unless you're very keen and you're very observant and you're very close and this it helps you build a very a very uh, a very strong bond with the child how can we help with the emotional negligence i think the first the best the simplest and the best things and the least you can do to a person to be there for them emotionally is listen listen to them the least you can do to a person who is struggling is to listen to their problems it's only when you listen and it's not for you to listen to answer back listen to listen there's a difference for me like i always say that there's a difference between listening and see and uh truly listening when you listen you're just listening 
you are listening and at the same time trying to figure out what you should reply back to the person. But when you listen to listen, you're just listening to the person, you try to read in between the lines, you you look at them, you observe them, you, you, you don't just listen, but you also listen to their emotions, you also listen to their heart, you listen to their facial expression, like you listen, you, you observe keenly about whatever they do. And that will help you analyze whatever the problem, even if you're going to offer a solution to them, don't do it just yet. Just sometimes all a person needs is just a listening ear. You don't need to understand them, you don't need to analyze them, you don't need to solve their problems for them. They just want somebody to listen to them. That is all nice. So the first step, I think, is for one to listen. When you listen, you have solved half of the problem. And then the second comes from the listening, which is reply if the person needs you to reply, to help them see, find solution, make them see reasons. If you, if you have been there, like if you have, if you know the problem and you can offer solution to them, do that please. And then I think that's all. Yeah, listen, offer solutions, help them. All a person needs emotionally is somebody to be present for them emotionally. When you have a person, when you have an emotional partner, when you have a person who is present for you emotionally, most people like that, they tend to have, they are at less risk of suffering from other mental health problems because they, like, they are somehow in control over their emotions. Now, talking about mental health, this emotional negligence is a huge factor that risk, that leads to uh, mental health. I have made a series of videos some time ago on this channel and it's a mental health series but mostly what i focused on that video was uh, its emotions how to identify your emotions fear how to like when you should truly cry things like this the relationship between the brain and the heart how they occur and how you should be able to work out to work things out between the brain to listen to your mind or listen to your heart things like this but I want to make videos. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make videos on mental health. And mind you guys, I'm not a professional. I just do my underground work and just feel that we need to... I feel like we need to keep breaking these barriers, especially coming from uh, a northern, from an African household. These things are a huge barrier to us and it's, it brings more problems to us. We might be cool, like we might be cool as a family with every other person. But emotionally, we are not stable, we are not mentally okay. And these are all things that tend to make us have problems with our families. Most, I believe that like, uh, to a certain percentage, that the problems that occur in a family mostly deal with mental health. And we don't know them, we don't realize them until it's very too late. But when we're breaking the barrier, talking about it more often, that helps us be aware of our mental health. And also, if you want me to make videos, about anything on mental health please just let me know in the comment section and also yeah this is the kind of thing that makes a person be narcissist narciss not an, a self-absorbed or sensitive self-centered kind of person when my emotional needs let's say for example when my emotional needs are not catered whoever i turn to they don't have time for me they they treat me it's not like they treat me like i don't matter but my emotions do not matter to them why won't I make myself my own priority? Because if I make myself my own priority, nobody can bring me down. A lot of people learn it the hard way because we neglect our emotions, we neglect our feelings, how we feel. Some of us cannot even truly express ourselves okay. Some cannot differentiate between I'm sad, I'm angry, or I'm confused, or I'm just down. There are different, like there are different kinds of emotions, and there are different ways to express them. Some of us cannot. Do, most of us, let me not say some of us, because most of us sometimes we misplace these things, and it leads to mental health problem. Why am I talking about this mental health? Because well, yes, we have been through a lot, especially the previous year. How things have been going. A lot of people have been depressed, and she's like a lot of things have happened. And sometimes when these things happen, we do not know how to handle them. We don't know how to act and we don't even know how to go about it. So if we're breaking the idea, like spreading the word, keep reaching out to people like this, I believe this is something that, like this is 
the little way that we can do to give back to the society by helping someone or the little we can do to help someone. You don't know who you can help by sharing things like this. So if you find this video worth sharing or worth watching, please share it to your loved ones, to your friends, share it out to people. The goal is to just let people be aware of situations and how to handle things. Like, comment, subscribe and share, keep sharing it out to other people. Meet you in my next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.